And what have you been doing today in your isolation? <laughs> have you just got up and stopped in? <laughs> This is Emil Lövström and you are listening to the podcast Schlagervännerna. If someone told me one year ago that I would be talking to my biggest Eurovision legends, I would have said, you are yanking my crank, but no dream impossible. Welcome, Lindsay Drakas. Welcome. You are right? <laughs> I'm good. How are you? <laughs> yeah, very well. Thank you. Do you think we shall begin with a high note? <laughs> Um, not at this time. I probably need to sing a couple of songs before I do that high note. Tell me, Lindsay, how did you end up in the pre-selection for Eurovision in the UK? Um, I started singing professionally when I was 12. Um, I used to sing in a lot of events around Sheffield. And then I met my manager, who obviously got me the um, the Eurovision experience, should I say. Um, I, first of all, went to meet a producer that was based down London called Peter Van Hook that knew Paul Carrick, who was my boss. So from then we went round uh, record labels and had, uh, you know, interviews to get an album deal. So on from there, this song was going around called No Dream Impossible that was wrote purely for the Eurovision and met the writers an hour after I was recording the song. And then it went down from 8,000 songs down to four. And oh. I, was, I was in one of the four. So, so my song got picked and then I did a song for Europe, which is a BBC TV programme. Uh, and then on that, I got uh, loads of votes and won. And then I went to Copenhagen and uh, represented the UK. If we stop there, uh, yep. was, was the song only presented to you? I mean, did you do the original demo? Uh, the original demo was by Russell Watson. I don't know if you know Russell Watson, he's an opera singer to listen to his take on the song his um, his input into the song uh, was completely different to my input because obviously he's an opera singer and um, it was quite operatic and m- mine obviously was a dance with high vocals and, and high end with rappers and stuff in it I've got a box um, I mean I, you, you've just, um, we're friends on Facebook well did you see that memorabilia I found with the Union Jack flag and all the CDs and yeah, yeah. Well, upstairs, I've got tons and tons and tons of tons of takes of all the No Dream Impossible. Could we and please I've... play one of them? <laughs> but that means I'd have to go back into the loft and get the box. Yes, out. you have to, darling. You have to. No Dream Impossible. No Dream Impossible. years old in 2001 I was and I was 15 so we could be sisters oh my god totally like related <laughs> <laughs> now at 35 would you say to 16 year old Lindsay go for it or wait a while uh wait a while I'd love to do it now with yeah. my with my brain and my musical uh, experience yeah how would Lindsay Drakas sound in 2021 if she would compete 
I would probably, because I've looked at the 2020 songs and it's, I don't know what his name is. You know where you've listed them from 1 to 40? 41. Uh, 41, sorry, yep. You'll get it right, Lynn, 41. And I like this song and I, if I could have sang something like this, but I, obviously it's completely, I think he's French. It's G-J-O-N and then there's apostrophe and then a S and then it says tears. I like his song. It's Switzerland. Switzerland, yeah. I love that song. It's great. I could imagine Adele singing that if if it was English. So I've marked that as my favourite, that my number one. And then I like Move and Violent Thing. There's quite a lot, actually. Have you heard um, Alive? Alive's pretty cool. Yes, I have. Yep. Obviously, you have. Yes. But I'm just looking on it. I'm a freak, you know. I know, I know. No worries. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, if I did it this, this time, I meant... If you go back to 2001, yeah. uh, the technology wasn't advanced as it is now. I mean, I'd do different props as much as I could, do you know what I mean? And, and obviously the sound would be so crystal clear. And I just think obviously, you know, time, as time goes on, things do get better, don't they? And yeah. I do feel that, the. I mean, I love it now because obviously I've got a six-year-old daughter and we watch it and we really enjoy watching it. We, we put like sparkly tops on. And we watch it on a, on a Saturday night. So I'm really gutted that it's not actually on this May. Because obviously for the reason we, we all need to stay and stay safe and, and get better and, and help the um, the nurses and doctors and surgeons and whatever. We just need to stay at home, don't we? So. Yeah. No Dream Impossible was one of my favourites in the Eurovision uh, that year. And with that said, you crushed Sweden's biggest James Corden fan, Nanne Grönvall, in the pre-selection. Okay, we'll send them my love. Do, what, what do you remember from the national final in UK? From the song for Europe? Yeah. Was your friend, what's her name? Not Nan. Nan there. Uh, did she sing a song about men? Yes. Yeah, and was it something like Totally Typical Men? Yes. Da, 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 da. That's what yes. all I can remember. Totally Impossible Men. I'm gonna There was a um, a TV program in the UK called um, All Together Now. So there were there was a uh, hundred judges. I was part of the hundred judges because obviously I did the Eurovision. And another lady there, she was in. She was the backing singer in the other songs. Now I don't know what the other songs were. I just can't remember them. The other song was Lucy Randall, Just Another Rainbow, Charlotte Henry, King of Love, Tony Moore. That's my love, Luke Galliana, to yeah. die for money penny, twisted and obsession with why should I love you? Oh my god, you know all this. Um so what was the last four? So I was the last four and um uh Lucy Rendell Men and Tony Moore. I think it was I think it was Lucy Rendell. I think it was I think it was her. So I think it she was she was singing as one of the backup singers in the actually on the, the track. Yes. Oh. So, yeah. So it was nice to see her as well. But when she came up, she went, I, I was on Song for Europe with you. And I was like, uh, were you? <laughs> <laughs> That's a Sheffield accent. Sorry. It's kind of a bit of a blur. But what's such an experience for a 16 year old, to be honest? Yeah, I can't believe it. When in Copenhagen, then Estonia won somehow, and no one <laughs> knows why. <laughs> Which know. songs were your favorites? I specifically remember. The Swedish entry was a, um, they were pop stars, weren't they? Yes. Was it a band? Yes, called Friend. Ah, yeah, I loved them because they, they were absolutely like, beautiful to me. Listen to your heartbeat, it will take you high. I remember coming into, into the green room and when I'd just finished my song, uh, because obviously you're still shaking from all the um, from all the energy that you've just used. And they said, oh, my God, you were amazing. You've won it. You're so talented. I was like, oh, that's really cool. <laughs> that's all I can remember. 
I remember sat down at the in the green room, sat on a computer drinking Diet Coke. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. I don't really go out and party like all the 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 ex <laughs> thing because obviously with being sixteen, I had to kind of like do the rehearsals and then go go to the hotel and sleep. Yeah. yeah. Your live performance from Top of the Pops were sent to the TV stations in Europe okay. to show in TV shows leading up to Eurovision. Yep. And boy, you made people nervous. And we are not talking about the braces now. Yep. You mean about the end? No, that I did. Yes, it might be have been a bit off key. Yeah, it was. It was very off key because what happened was I did Song for Europe. Then I sang the song about 15 times there. Then after I won and went to the, actually was crammed the winner, I went and did about 18 interviews, some TV interviews. Just, if you remember, I'm 16 at this. Yeah. 18 interviews. And then the day after I was in Top of the Pops doing the song again. So if you yeah. think of, if you think of the, the, the uh, like, a, like an athlete training, I was constantly on it all the time. So I think I was tired, basically. Does that make sense? Yes, absolutely. And in Copenhagen, Lindsay, you showed everyone who's the boss. Did because I? Because you nailed it then. Yeah, well, I I, I kind of had um, lots of singing lessons because at 16 year old, you still your vocals are still growing. They don't stop growing until you're at least about 21 to 25. Yeah. And then as you get older, they start to mature and you start to get to the point of where you know how they work and how what songs you can sing and blah 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 blah. so I had singing lessons up to that and I had to like use a lot of um, curvature so if I sing No Dream Impossible now I sing it a lot different to how I sang it when I was 16 obviously because I'm a lot older for example like No Dream Impossible it's like No Dream Impossible as long as you're living with hope in your heart I had to like really like curve it and, and kind of really use my training now it's completely different because I've used all that training and I've kind of got it. It's a lot different. So like the, the question that you asked me before about would I do it now? Yes, because obviously I'd, I'd, I'd think more about it because I always think you have one chance and one song, one chance and one opportunity to do it. At 16, you don't think about that. Oh my God, how many more interviews am I going to do? How many more of this am I going to do? How more, do you get what I mean? So the yes, momentum yes. of it was, was a lot of pressure now i'd really enjoy it does that make sense absolutely and with that said it was an operatic singer that that uh, sang the song from the first time right yes yes, yes. So, but my singing teacher pius hume in sheffield is classically trained so i am classically trained but i'm told that you know what you're the only person that's actually pulled me on my bad notes and i'm glad you have I'm really glad you have, because sometimes I look at them and think, oh, my God. But I'm so glad you have because of the pressure. I was tired. I was 16. I'd done loads of interviews. And I'm not being funny, but I meant if you've got, I don't know, I'm just saying this, if you've got nieces and nephews and and, and friends with babies that are, that are grown up in the 60s, imagine that pressure yeah. of you or your family member being sent out to do something like that. And I can tell you why I ask you the question is yep. because I want you to tell us about this. Because in Sweden we have a program yeah. nearly one month before Eurovision. And there was a journalist told about all the songs. And he presented your song and said, well, this girl cannot sing. I'm a bit nervous how this will uh, end in Eurovision. And that's what this was the first time we heard the song. Why did this end? the top of the pot why didn't they just send the, the the recording yeah i don't know that do not make sense is that just set for me to fall if that makes sense yeah, Are they yeah just aiming for me to fall yes exactly that is not fair that yeah. is a load of <laughs> yeah yeah but you were struggling in uh <clears throat> basically set to fall yeah especially when they're sending stuff like that yeah but it's not that it's the, it's the fact that how much um you work hard to get it nailed on yeah. And and it's a big no. It's a top E, and it's full pel and it's full voice. It's not it's not a head voice. It's full yeah. voice, and it's sixteen year old. And yeah, I'm so glad you've mentioned it. Well done, my sunshine. Thank you very much. I really appreciate well, that. Wonderful, wonderful. Because then it's maybe I have some red dress now. 
Yes, I was 16. I didn't really, I kind of took it on the, you know, I took it on the chin. I was from Sheffield. A lot of people said that I was made of steel because obviously in Sheffield we made steel. So I was kind of like, yeah, I'm really tough at this and yeah, I can really do this. But deep down inside, I was 16 years old. I didn't know what I was going into. 28 points and a 15th place. Yes. Why do you think you didn't get more points? I'm not sure. Um, maybe, I mean, do you remember the lady that was after me that sang Energy? What, yes, what? Nusha Darenda from Slovenia. Yes, I'm so glad you know everything. She. I have spoken to her too. Oh yeah, what did she say? What, what was her experience? Uh, it was fantastic, she said. Uh, it was the biggest thing she had ever done. Yeah, well, it is for me. It's the biggest thing. It's, I mean, I am the 46th UK entrant ever. That that's that I'm like, I've been, well, when I went and did a couple of gigs in London, there was like, you're like, you're Eurovision royalty. <laughs> yes. And I'm like, oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> it is the biggest thing I've done. In Sweden, half of the population watched the Swedish pre-selection during yep. six weeks. Yes. Why do not UK care about the competition, you think? I don't know, and I wish they would. Who would you like to see compete for UK, and who do you think should have said no? Um, As in, what, as in any of our artists we've got? Yeah. Well, I think Adele should write us a song. Adele? Adele, yeah. Maybe you, she... could, maybe you could sing it? Well, I'd love to sing it. Well, she can sing it, but I don't know whether she would. Um... <laughs> Going back to that, I mean, you guys, apparently, do you take like six months to pick your Eurovision? Six weeks. Six weeks, but the run up to it, is it is it yeah. more like, is it, uh, that is amazing, isn't it? And you have yeah. festivals, you have idols. Yes, it's big parties over six weeks. I, know, I don't know. You tell them, you tell the UK that they should do it because at the end of the day, it's fun, it's light-hearted. The only thing that UK get a bit like mardy about is no one ever votes for us. Blah blah blah. Da, da, da. We all we do is moan. <laughs> 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 oh, I think it's to be honest, I hid under a massive rock after I did the Eurovision. I don't know why. I don't know whether it was my management that was like, let's just go on the download. But why did I do that? Because I could have I could have been out in Sweden, Denmark, Germany. I could be gigging everywhere because you guys love the Eurovision and I love that because I love you for that, if that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, but why you did you why... made me love the Eurovision again? But why didn't you get any second single after No Dream Impossible? I don't know. I got a six album deal. I don't know. You think my management would have got someone in to just write for me or write or because obviously I was still young, I wasn't really into writing like I am now. You didn't sing any other song after No Dream Impossible? Oh, nothing. I had no other single, nothing, no other original at all. Nothing. Zero. Zilch. The only thing I did, a TV programme that was going to be released on ITV that was released, it was called The Royal. I was going to be the singer for that, if that makes sense. So, for example, uh, I had to sing, which I did. I recorded some 60s uh, covers yeah. and kind of interpreted, interpreted them in my own, in LD Wright, in my own, own in my own. Like, versions. Yeah, versions. Thanks for that. Um, it's still early. <laughs> <laughs> um, I did some 60s covers and I was going to be the singer. So, for example, say for scene was a love scene. Something, you know, anyone who had a love, do, do. you know, that's um, still a black one, anyone who had a heart. Yeah. I recorded that. But it never went to anything. No, it didn't. Last year, Lindsay, you released an album. Tell me about it. I did. So this album has been literally, I would say, 12 years in the making. Oh. Yeah. So when I obviously did the Eurovision, I... Went on the down low for a bit. Then I went back on tour with Paul Carrick when I got to about 23. And in that time, I got married. I, uh, well, fell in love quite quite quickly, got married. And then we we split up a couple of years afterwards. And it just didn't work. You know, I wish him all the, all the best. We just went a separate, separate ways, as you do. And I started a job with one of my best friends now who actually wrote my album. But he wrote it about my experiences. So there's a track called um, Don't Go Away. 
That's my divorce song. Oh. I always seem to run when the best things come undone. And I just can't see the road ahead shine brightly. In the morning it will bring so many changes my way. Did I tell you that I'm leaving you today? Yes, I have. And my favorite from the album is Mainframe. Oh, okay. In the dark, deep inside the forest, worlds apart. Try and keep a promise, you're still here. Take it, break it, in it just to win it. Keep me out of everything you want to be. Leave me in the forest, dark as key. Keep me out of everything you want to be. Take it, break it, in it just to win it But I can tell you two can play the same game We are just the same I can play the same game We are just the same So keep me in the frame Keep me in the main frame Frame is uh, about my ex Um, obviously keeping me out of situations we didn't really we didn't see eye to eye he he, he never involved me in anything you know like a mainframe like kind of getting involved with stuff he kind of kept me out so that didn't work false start false start is about the eurovision oh so if you listen to false start and listen to it to 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 all, all the words this is how clever julian is julian jones if you if you can get him he's um he's a singer songwriter False Start is about being promised the world in the music industry and not getting what you wanted from what we've talked about. So if you listen to False Start, you'll be like, oh my God, oh my God, that makes total sense. for talking to me i really appreciate it and next time when i'm in the uk how about an all-night bender yes definitely if you want to come and have a couple of beers with ld you can do wonderful we keep in touch and i think we shall end this program on a high note yes (laughs) can i just mention as well um no dream impossible is being released on monday digitally it will yes on spotify on spotify wonderful so if you want to make a big thing, so no Dream Impossible. So on Twitter, this uh, gentleman who's obviously a Eurovision fan put hashtag no stream impossible. And he got in touch with me and he said, hashtag no stream impossible. Why can't we get no Dream Impossible digitally? I released it on Monday, the 13th of April. Wonderful. Finally, some good news in this COVID-19 <laughs> times. <laughs> All right, sunshine. Thank you. Thank you. Big kiss. We keep in touch. Yep. Yes, definitely. Please do. If you ever come to Sheffield, and uh, you you'd have to come and stay with with my family and a couple of drinks and stuff. <laughs> I promise. <laughs>